All right, so we're now going to be going into proportions. So yesterday was all about percents. Today we started with percents just as practice, but our main focus today really is on proportions and solving a proportion. I keep using this word proportion. Basically, that's just a fancy math way of saying you got a fraction equal to a fraction. That's a proportion. All right, and so when we have this then, this is the one where we cross multiply. And so when we cross multiply, what we're doing here is we're actually doing 20 times x, which is why we get 20x, and then it's equal to. This is the part where most people stumble on the cross multiplying part, is they forget that they're equal to. It's equal to 18 times 11, which is 198. Notice that by cross multiplying, we actually get rid of the fractions. Every now and then I'll see somebody who tries to take it and write it like it's 20x over 198 or something like that. It's not that. It's equal. Because technically, what is going on behind the scenes when you cross multiply is we're actually doing two steps at once. We're multiplying both sides by 18 in order to get rid of that 18. And then we're multiplying both sides by 20 in order to get rid of that 20. And so when we do that, notice the 20 ends up multiplying by the x and the 18 ends up multiplying by the 11. That's what cross multiplying really is. It's a shortcut. It's just a shortcut that comes up off enough that we're okay doing it. All right, once we have 20x equals 198, you know what to do from there, right? We need to solve it for x, so that means dividing by 20. Is that gonna give us a nice pretty whole number? No. no. Does that mean we did something wrong? No. I mean, sometimes it does, but no. That can totally happen. When we divide it by 20, we get 9.9, .9, and yes, that is our final answer. Which means, just so you have some context, what that solution really means, it means that if I did 9.9 .9 divided by 18, I would get the exact same decimal as if I did 11 divided by 20. That's what that's meaning for us. Wait, so can you just do that then? Now with this problem, this one, for some people, you look at it and it seems like way scarier. But actually, it's not bad. The trick is that seeing that we can rewrite it. Remember that when you multiply a fraction by a whole, so like in this case, we're doing 2 sevenths times x. That's the same thing as doing 2 sevenths times x over 1. So really, I could just rewrite this as 2x over 7. And by doing that as my first, I now make this into a proportion. Just a fraction equal to a fraction, which now makes it easy to do by cross multiplying. So go ahead and do that. Do the cross multiplication, see what you get from it. So when we cross multiply, I'm going to do 2x times 21. That's going to give us 42x. Then it's equal to, and we cross multiply the other way. So there I'm going to be doing 7 times 30, which is going to be 210. So now I have 42x equals 210. Now it's easy to solve. One of the beautiful things about cross multiplying is it takes something that looked really big and complicated and makes it something really easy. Because I just now have to divide both sides by the 42. And so we end up finding that x equals and again, notice if I plug that 5 in up here or here, what that's telling us. So like if I plug the 5 in here, let's just see what that would look like. I'd be doing 2 times 5 over 7 equals 30 over 21. So in other words, 10 sevenths equals 30 over 21. Well, notice... What does 30 over 21 reduce to? 10 sevenths. 10 sevenths. Because I can divide top and bottom by 3. And so, yes, they are in fact equal. You get it a decimal too, but the decimal's kind of ugly on this one. But yeah, it's telling us that that's the one number that I could plug back in for x and have this actually be equal. All right, now we're going to tackle something that looks like this. It's got a couple x's in it. So, write down this one now. And in doing this one, we got a fraction equal to a fraction, so we start the same way. We cross-multiply. So when we cross-multiply in this case, 
I'm going to be doing x times x. And what is x times x? It's x squared. Every now and then we do think 2x. Got to keep that straight. When we multiply the x's, that's where we get the squared. And then you multiply the 2 times the 8 as well. So that's going to give us 16. So we have x squared equals 16 now. All right, we've seen this before, right? This is a great example about how the stuff we did first semester is going to keep coming back. You got to still have those skills. I'm going to square root both sides in order to figure out what x is. We've seen that, right? What is the thing that we have to remember, though, when we take the square root of both sides? The plus or minus. So, x equals both 4 and negative 4. And again, notice why. Because if I plug a positive 4 back into that original equation, 2 fourths equals 4 eighths. Notice they both equal a half. So yeah, those two are equal. But if I plug in the negative 4, 2 over negative 4 equals a negative 4 over 8. Well, a positive divided by a negative is a negative, so that's equal to negative one-half. And a negative divided by a positive is also a negative, so that also equals negative one-half. They're just different ways of getting the same answer on both sides. And there's multiple x's, there's often multiple ways to get there. But if you can do that problem, you can do something that looks much more complicated, even though it really isn't bad, as long as you see, hey, it's a proportion. I know to cross-multiply here. All right, so when we cross multiply, I'm going to be doing 18 times x plus 3. Well, notice that's like if I wrote that out, it'd be 18 times x plus 3 like that. Notice the 18 is going to multiply by both the x and the 3. You're distributing the 18 to both of them when you put that in there. The same thing is going to happen when you multiply the 15 this way. You're going to multiply the 15 by the x and the 15 by the 5. And so when all is said and done on this one, you should get a final answer here of just x equals 7. Now, some of the early proportions, I mean, it's fairly straightforward. There's not a lot of numbers that it could be. Here, it's not like you're going to guess your way into it generally. So it gives you a nice perspective in seeing how we can use some of the algebra skills as well to figure out some of these types of things.